Hi, everyone, and welcome to Spotlight with Scientists in School. Today, I am joined by John Urschel. And John is a mathematician. He has his PhD from MIT. I'm going to try and get all this right, but currently you're at Princeton. And John is also a former football player for the Baltimore Ravens. Thank you so much for being here. This is so exciting. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to be here. This, uh, this should be fun. It is going to be fun. And I want to mention right off the bat mm -hmm. that John, you're Canadian. You were born in Winnipeg, were you not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Born in Winnipeg. Spent uh, spent a lot of time in Canada in my life. I uh, I went to school in in the states, but uh, my father lived in Canada for a good chunk of my life. So you know, lots of time in like uh, Ontario, oh. lots of summers and winters in uh, like Calgary, where I have a lot of family. So no, I've, right. I'm yeah, I'm Canadian. I'm also American, but I feel I feel quite Canadian as well. That's awesome. All right, let's get started into this dual life, uh, math and football. We're going to get into both things. So um, growing up, I didn't play football, but I did love math. I loved math quite a bit. And I loved math because there was always a right answer, right? It couldn't really be left up to interpretation. And you hear a lot of people loving or saying that they love the elegance or the beauty of math. I'm interested in knowing why you love math or did you love math as a child even? Like, when did this start? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. I mean, math, as you say, one nice thing about math that you don't see in a lot of other areas is there's a right answer, there's a wrong answer. It's it's very clear cut. And in some sense, like because it's so clear cut, people might think that, you know, it could be a little dry, but it's actually, it's not the case at all because, well, yes, it's clear cut, but you see these beautiful connections in math where things from seemingly different areas connect in strange and unexpected ways. And the other way in which I feel like math is very sort of beautiful or elegant is yes, something is either right or wrong, but just because something's right doesn't mean that there's a right way to show that it's true. And, you know, suppose you want to prove something or you want to show that something's true. There's a lot of different ways you can go about it. And the way that you choose to do it, the way that you approach it is sort of like, uh, it has an artistic element to it. Like no two people's sort of like proof of some fact is going to look exactly the same. And there's something, uh, there's something beautiful in that. Yeah, yeah. People talk about the beauty of math all the time. That's for sure. Now, your love of math, I read in, uh, we'll talk about the book that you wrote in a little bit, but you credit your mom um, always seeing the math in everyday life. And I think she, she kind of maybe hooked you with math puzzles or story I love in your book mm -hmm. um, is that you said that when you'd be at the grocery store, your mom would say, if you can figure out um, the taxes on this grocery bill before the, the cash register, then you get to keep the change. And so she turned this regular grocery trip into a game and it kind of hooked you. Uh, would you say that's true that it was like this love of puzzles and that your mom helped you along? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, uh, yeah, I went to school in uh, New York state. So I got very good at uh, multiplying by eights because that was our tax. tax. <laughs> and, <laughs> and yeah, it was just, uh, it was a lot of fun in my household when I was a kid. My mom would always buy like board games and puzzle books and yes, math workbooks as well. But everything I did mathematically in the household as a kid was through the lens of a game or discovery or some sense of wonder or some sense of understanding. It was never around you need to learn this or you need to memorize this. It was, it was a big focus on fun and sort of like uh, wonder in some sense. I love that. Because I've also read you say you loved math puzzles, not necessarily math class. And I think your mom was really great at, you know, bringing that sense of wonder and curiosity into every everyday life. So now that you're a parent, I'm wondering, do you have any advice for parents? How do you get kids excited about math? It's a great question. I'm figuring it out for myself. So I have a uh, four-year-old right now and uh, she loves math. She says that she's actually not going to be a mathematician. She's already a mathematician. And, <laughs> I love that. And yeah, so, so far, so far, so good. And the, the focus that uh, I've really tried to, the thing I've tried to really focus on is this sense of joy and sort of discovery in math. And so 
it shows up in so many different things we do. We go to the store and we buy sparkling water. We take the sparkling water out and we have to put them in the fridge. Before we put them in the fridge, we try to make shapes with the sparkling water. So we try to see like, oh, how many things of sparkling water do we have? Can we make a rectangle? Can we make a square? Things like this. So, you know, fun little games. What does it mean to, you know, take all these things and put them in a rectangle? Just yeah. uh, fun things like this. Yeah, I love doing that with my girls too, but none of them became mathematicians. <laughs> they all went I, in a different way. I mean, I think I wouldn't be, how should I put this? I wouldn't be disappointed if my daughter became a mathematician, but there's so many amazing things you can do, so many amazing things you become. Like, there's no reason for her to become exactly what I did. So, uh, That's right. you know, I hope she loves math and I hope she, uh, you know, she continues to sort of enjoy it because I think it's really useful and really important. But, uh, but also, like, uh, I'm not so set on like my daughter right. needs to be a mathematician. She can be whatever she wants. Whatever to be. she wants, right? Exactly. Um, so I taught math. I taught grade seven, eight math, which grade seven and eight, that's a that's a tough age to begin with. Um, but you know, a lot of times kids kept saying to me this, um, and you might have heard this too, like, you know, solving this equation is such a waste of time. When am I ever gonna do this in real life? Or, you know, when am I ever gonna need to know this? Yeah, this is a this is a good question, and this is a tough one to answer because in many ways, so not so much for seventh and eighth grade, but especially as you get to, let's say, 10th and 11th grade, and you look at things like uh, trigonometry and more advanced concepts, it is true that you might not necessarily use whatever formula you learn in that class. You might not, but you very well may, depending on what area you go into. And the point is, even if you don't use it, you are going to use the quantitative reasoning skills that you've gained through taking math for all these years. I mean, it's the sort of, it's the same way as, you know, you're in English class. Yeah, I remember reading all these, you know, English novels, all these different things, all this Shakespeare. And the question is, oh, when am I ever going to need to know, you know, this novel? Well, that novel in particular, probably not. I mean, maybe if I go into, creative writing or some such thing. But the point is that all this stuff I'm doing is helping me become a better writer in general, which everyone needs, and become a better communicator. And in math, it's no different. Everyone needs to be able to think quantitatively and to be able to communicate quantitatively. You know, the other thing, John, I found when I loved math when I was a kid, um, and I went into the guidance office, I remember I was trying to decide what to do, which path to take. And so I said, I love math. And the guidance counselor said, that's great. You can be an accountant. Uh, you can be an engineer. They gave me all these options. No one at that time said to me, you know what? You can be a mathematician. And actually, if somebody told me that at the guidance office, like, you know, 30 years ago, I probably, 40 years ago, I probably wouldn't uh, even know what that means. Like, how do you explain what a mathematician is? Yeah, I think it's... We have an advertising issue. We really do because, you know, <laughs> I like, love that. when I was a kid, when I was in high school, I had, ne I had never even heard of the word mathematician. I had never even heard of this career. You know, there's posters in all my teachers sort of like uh, classrooms, you know, engineers, rocket scientists, all these different things. Never did I, I ever hear the word mathematician. And I think it's, uh, it does. That's a disservice because uh, it's a really great career. Uh, you know, it's it's quite fulfilling. And also, you don't need to go into academia. So I'm going to be, you know, an academic mathematician. I'm going to work at a university. But you can do all sorts of things. You can work for the government. You can work for sort of the Googles, the Amazons of the world. You can go work for hedge funds. A lot of my friends ended up going the finance route with, you know, a math undergrad or math PhDs. And you know maybe they're the really smart ones, and so there's there's lots of different things you can do with math, but uh, somehow I think like at the high school level it's not so well advertised. Right, because, I agree. You, know, you twenty years ago they didn't even mention this. Me, you know, they didn't no. mention it. it's, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, advertising. Wow. Yeah, advertising issue right there for sure. Now, the next question I have, uh, it's my colleague. This uh, wanted me to ask you this, which I found an interesting question. She says. Ask John, what's his favorite mathematical theory or equation, and how would you explain it to children? Ooh, that's a tough one. It is tough. 
Yeah, I'll tell you the thing. I'll tell you one thing that really gave me a sense of wonder. So when I was in college, I was taking a, uh, I was taking what was like pretty much a calculus class. So it was about understanding and proving ideas of calculus. And, you know, we started to learn about the idea of what happens when you add, uh, when you add a lot of numbers up together. And one really interesting thing is the way that uh, infinity, like, is really surprising and shocking in mathematics. Really? Yeah, yeah. So this is, I would say, one of my, like, uh, this is one of the things that uh, I really enjoyed early on in math is that oftentimes when you're dealing with, like, the concept of infinity, like, the idea of adding infinitely many things, in many ways, your intuition, like, is wrong initially. and the ways in which like you train your intuition by like seeing these examples or seeing these ideas that are unexpected in some way. This really like, uh, I would say this was, this was something that really like showed me a sense of wonder like earlier on in my math career. What drew you to football? My dad played football. My dad played uh, college ball at the uh, University of Alberta. Um, I, uh, yeah, I just always saw like my dad, I saw like, you know, pictures of him playing football from when he was younger and I always wanted to try it. And, you know, once I started playing, I, uh, I really took to it. Like I really liked the, uh, camaraderie just, uh, yeah, it was, it was something that, uh, I, I really, really enjoyed. And do you find that you use any mathematical concepts when playing football? Do you integrate like any math strategies to beat your opponent? Sadly, sadly, no, but I, but I do think, I think that uh, sort of like years of training your quantitative thinking does help me make good sort of decisions quickly, like before it starts, like maybe right before the play starts, I look at the defense, I see the way they're lined up, I see specific things, and I can infer things relatively quickly. But doing um, actual math, this would this would get me killed. Yes, <laughs> I actually went out and got the book. You've written a book called uh, Mind and Matter. Oh wow! A life in math and football. I really, really um, enjoyed reading this. My first question is, why did you write a book? What made you want? Yeah, to write a book? so I, you know, I was finishing up or my career in football, and I wanted to write a math book. I thought, you know what? I I really love math. I have this platform why not like write a math book, like a mass market math book for people to like help, you know, encourage people and get people excited about math. And my wife is a writer. And so we were sort of doing it together. And we, uh, we sent this out to a bunch of places and my wife's publishing, uh, the, the publishing company that my wife writes for most often is Penguin Press. And so we have a proposal and we send it to Penguin Press. And Penguin Press, they're like, we love it. This is awesome. This is amazing. But uh, John and Louisa, if you're really serious about like talking about math and about like getting people interested in mathematics and showing this, like you cannot ignore this, com this other like half of your life. You can't like ignore football. In some sense, they felt like it would be doing a disservice to the readers and also would do a disservice to promoting the mathematics. And so that's how it sort of, uh, that's how it came to be. It's like a memoir of sorts. There's a lot of math in it. There's also a lot of football, which, yeah. which, which I think Penguin Press was right about that, that uh, in some sense, the football also helps like transmit the math to people who normally wouldn't pick up a math book. Right, and, right. Yeah, that's how it came to be. Okay, so you're, now you're touching on something. Um, it's perfect for my next question. I've I, if you walk into a room and you say, hey, I'm John Urschel and uh, I'm a former football player for the Baltimore Ravens, people get very excited. Same thing if you introduce yourself as a rock star or an actor. If you introduce yourself as a mathematician, do you think you're going to get the same, oh my gosh, that's amazing? And if not, why, why is that not happening? I do actually get the, this is amazing, I think, but I get it in a different way. In like for football, I get, oh, this is amazing. I want to be a professional football player when I grow up. This is like so amazing. Like I watch this, like when, you know, it's when someone says like, oh, I'm a MIT, you know, mathematician, people say, wow, that's really amazing. I could never do that. Uh -huh. I, you know, you know, math is not for me. Like it's sort of, uh, 
that's amazing, but this is not, uh, but it's not something they're aspiring to. It's like, this is amazing that they do something that I could never hope to do sort of thing. Right, right, and, okay. But it, but it is true that, you know, the football player does definitely get more attention. And that's, you know, that's because, well, the football player is the person they see on TV. The football player is yeah. the person they see in the media, the person they see sort of like glorified. Whereas, you know, mathematicians and scientists, not, not so much, unfortunately. Right. Yeah, I think you're right. It's tied into the TV, the exposure on social media and all of that. So then my next question is, um, how do we make mathematicians and scientists cool? Like, we, you know, what, first of all, what does a cool scientist even look like? And how do we get kids to think, yeah, it is cool to be a mathematician? Well, I think mathematicians and scientists are pretty fundamentally cool people. I mean, it's cool. I think so, too. Yeah, as cool as anyone else's. I mean, the idea that, you know, you really like some area of science and you just want to learn a lot about it and you want to discover the truth and know what's going on there. I think that's a really like cool career. And I think the way in which we like make that seem cooler to, you know, to young people is to like put higher value on that, like to put higher value on the act of discovering these things or of learning about these things to put higher value on the amazing sort of like, on sort of the wonder of like lots of things in science. John, when I read your book, you said in there, uh, actually you don't sugarcoat a lot of things. You say that math is hard and that the struggle is good though. What do you mean by that sentence? It really stood out for me. Oh, I, I, I mean exactly what I, what I say. <laughs> math, math is definitely hard. I mean, yeah. I, and I think, it's important to say because oftentimes people get the impression, let's say they look at me and they say, oh, John, you were always amazing at math. It just came so easy for you. You were just born like this. You know, right. you're, you know, I could never do this. No, math is hard for me. Math has always been hard. I just enjoy that struggle. I enjoy sort of like learning. I enjoy not knowing something, working really hard. And coming to understand that it's that joy like when you have a really difficult jigsaw puzzle and you're like trying to yep. put all the pieces together and when you finally put it together that feeling yep. is really rewarding in some sense hard things and difficult things are the most rewarding things because you know you put effort into it and you know you worked hard to achieve it i mean okay football since i was a football player football is incredibly popular you know it, it's it's really, you know, such a, such a big sport. It's such a hard sport. Yeah. Football is so hard. Oh my Lord. Football is, I mean, you think math is hard. Football is really hard. <laughs> people love it. People want to yeah. play it. People want to, you know, talk about it. And yeah. so in some sense, I think it's important to stress that it's hard so that when someone is doing math themselves and they hit a roadblock and they're struggling, it's not like some bug, like, no, it's a feature, yeah. like, you know, math, like anything worth doing takes hard work. It takes effort. But that feeling of fulfillment when you, you know, when you climb that mountain, I think it's really, it's worth it. Can you excel at two things? Is there going to come a time where you have to pick one of the two, do you think? Yeah, that's a great question. I think, yes, you, you can definitely excel at two. You can definitely have multiple passions. But I do think, so there's two sides to that. Yes, you can have multiple passions. And I think it's important to have multiple passions and multiple things you're interested in to sort of lead a semi-balanced life in some sense. Right. But the other side of that is don't think you can do everything because you can't. Because I think it's important to recognize there's only so many hours in the day. You only have so much time. And there really is such a thing as too much. And so if you're doing too much and you feel like you don't have enough time for all the things you want to do, it means you're probably going to have to cut back on some things. There's, there's definitely a balance there, I think. Yeah, you can do multiple things and it's good to do multiple things, but I think to do too many things at a very high level is just really difficult just because yeah. you run out of time. Yeah, 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 there aren't enough hours in a day. Um, so John, you're retired from football. You've mm -hmm. written a book, you have yeah. a family. Yes. You're now teaching. Um, yes. Any regrets that you chose math over football? No, no. My, my life is uh, very, very nice, very, very pleasant these days. So I'm, I'm quite happy being a mathematician. 
That's awesome. This is so great. And I'll tell you what I love about your messaging and why I think this interview is going to be inspiring, not only to kids, but to teachers and parents watching it. You're not telling people like listening to you talk to go out there and pursue math. Your message is to go out and pursue what you love. Math. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's true. I think this is, this is good advice. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me.